Hello, everyone. Tom Fox back again with Michael and Melissa Novelli for another episode of the Paw Talk. Hey, guys, welcome back. Hi, Tom. Hey, Tom. We love the Paw Talk. Everybody loves the Paw Talk. So today we've got three great dogs. We're going to start with a dog named Near. Who can tell me about Near? So Nira is an amazing young girl who unfortunately has been in rescue way too long because there's this thing called black dog and black cat syndrome where these dogs seem to stay in rescue longer than they should. We had one of our celebrity ambassadors, Earl Turner, he's a local performer here and performs all over the country. His wife, Christine, and son, Aaron, came in today and they met Nira and Christine was just like, this is an amazing dog. And she has black cats, so she understands the whole thing. Nira comes here, and we went to the boarding facility, and then we brought Nira over. And she saw the excitement, because Nira knows when she comes here, it's fun time. She comes for nose works on Wednesdays. She comes for an enrichment training center. So, unfortunately, we had to bring her back to her kennel. Her whole demeanor changed. And Christine noticed that, and she told her son Aaron, that she, when she came to Potassic, the tail was wagging. She was all excited. Then when she had to go back to boarding, it was like, oh, man. So that's the heartbreaking part, seeing these dogs going back to boarding. But when they come here, it's all about fun and enjoyment. She's available right now for adoption. Is going to make somebody an amazing pet. Christine was giving her cheese, and she was taking it all nice. And it was great to see the interaction of meeting somebody new. Have you introduced her to Puppuccinos, Melissa? No. I don't think Nira's gotten a puppuccino. Yeah, actually she has with some of our volunteers. She trains on Thursday and then she does nose work on Wednesdays. So I believe that she actually went through the drive through at Starbucks. <laughs> she gets cheese and chicken on nose work days. So tell us about nose work. We've talked about it before, but it's such a great topic. It's so important for the dogs. And from what I can gather, looking at you guys, they love it. Yeah, they love nose work. We started Rescue Dog Nose Work back in 2020. And it's a great opportunity for dogs to come out. It helps build confidence. And what they do is they search for treats. And as they graduate, they search for different types of scents. And they it's, pop, it's problem solving. So we create puzzles and we put different things together. And then the puzzles, actually, it helps them use their sniffer. We call them the super sniffers. And it's just an amazing opportunity for them. And actually, nose work is just as mentally exhausting as a mile walk. And there's actually wow. competitions worldwide for dogs finding scents and things like that. And you don't have to have boxes. You don't have to have a facility. We do this with Bentley at our house multiple times a day. Take little bite-sized treats, hide them by the shoes, hide them under a toy, hide them by a pillow. It will help them burn energy, especially like when it's hot out. Like you said, it's 108 right now in Texas. So don't walk your dogs. We tell people all the time, don't walk your dogs when it's hot outside. Do some nose work. They'll be searching around the house for 10, 20 minutes for the treats, and you'll tire them out. So next up, guys, we have Baz. Tell me about Baz. So Baz is about this big, and he's got the coolest little look. He's got this crazy curly hair. I just want to snuggle him up. He's a cool little dog. He was here earlier today for training. So what kind of dog is Baz, Michael? What is he, like a little terrier mix? He's like a little terrier. He's very sensitive to new people. When he meets them, he's had a couple meet and greets, but he needs a patient adopter that is going to take their time to let him warm up because a couple of the meet and greets he went on, he just ran in the corner and was whimpering. And so he's a little leery about new people. And he's opened up a lot since he's been coming here. Is one of the reasons he might be so much like that is really a bad experience from prior owners or maybe even other dogs? I don't, I'm not too sure about other dogs. I think he's, he does well with other dogs. As a matter of fact, he was in, in the arena with a couple other dogs. I have a feeling that it was maybe a past experience with humans that has caused him to be unsure and basically not confident, but he's finding his way back here. And that's, what's great about this facility is we help the dogs trust people again. 
We help them build the confidence. That's so important. Yeah, he's just, he's doing really good. Our trainer, Melissa, that's one of her specialties is working with dogs that are a little shut down and helping them reach their full potential. So we have our final dog for this episode is Gonzo. First of all, any dog named Gonzo I'm already in love with. (laughs) But tell us about Gonzo. Tell us about his forever family and tell us about his journey through Autastic Friends to get to his forever home. So Gonzo is a shepherd mix and he was in boarding for well over 300 days. And he had some volunteers that rallied around him and wanted to give him opportunities. So one in particular started taking him out, taking him on car rides, really building a bond with him. And then he was fortunate enough to come to the training center. And uh, Melissa worked with him, did wonders with him, along with his volunteer team that transported him and really opened up a new world to Gonzo. There was a plea put out that Gonzo was still in boarding, all the progress he had made, and he found a foster. And after being in foster for just a short time, the foster fell in love with him, and the rest was history. So he's doing phenomenal. Here's what I wanted to ask you guys for the tip of this episode. How should or how long should you walk a dog, assuming weather conditions are favorable and it's not a heat issue? Should you build like a human? Should you build a dog up? Can a dog go a mile? How do you counsel folks around the length of a dog walk? Cindy, one of our awesome volunteers, she's a iron woman in marathons and she'll take dogs for runs and miles, but she knows, she knows what a dog can do. Some people, if you see the dog's getting tired, don't push it. God forbid you walk your dog too much. A good 15, 20 minute walk is good. Some people like to walk their dogs an hour, but you got to build it up. If it's a senior dog, you don't want to be walking the dog out there for a two mile walk. Yeah, I think there's a lot of factors. I think number one is age. I think number two is the condition of the dog. If the dog is overweight, if the dog has joint issues, if the dog has mobility issues, I think it really depends on each particular dog. If you have a dog that loves to run and burn energy, then that's a dog for Cindy to run. But if you have a dog that might have an injury to the back leg, then short walks are great. It still gets them up, gets them around, gets them moving around, and is enough for that particular dog. So it really depends. Yeah, it really depends on a lot of factors. Sounds like... Pay attention to what you're doing. Yeah. Listen to your dog. (laughs) Listen to your dog. That's great. We are getting near the end, but before we leave, you guys have a really exciting holiday party. And although it's August, I really want to start getting the word out about what you guys are doing for Pawtastic Friends. So could you tell us about the holiday party? And we'll build up to that throughout the rest of the fall. So our annual hope for the holidays is fantastic. It is Sunday, November 12th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. We have pictures with Santa, so people bring their dogs to get photos with Santa. We have, Or even their self, and yeah, they want a picture yeah. with Santa. Yeah, bring your parakeet. We don't care. <laughs> we have local vendors. We have entertainers. We do a silent auction. We do raffles, all to raise money to pay for the facility because this is a 5,000-square-foot facility, and you can guess what the bills are here for a year. We're just trying to help dogs change lives and save lives. So we do events like this. We do our annual block party and our hope for the holidays. Those are our two biggest events of the year for us. Mike and Melissa, it's been great to visit with you guys for the Paw Talk again. I look forward to our next time we can get together. Tom, thank you so much for creating the Paw Talk. Without you, this doesn't happen. So we greatly appreciate it. I know all our listeners that listen, they love it.